Hi everyone, I am so happy to be back with you. Um, in the last video, I believe that I had posed some um, kind of rhetorical questions at the end, like how do you get through a storm? How do you, how could you be in a furnace type situation and not be incinerated, etc.? Well, whether we talk about a furnace, a storm, a hurricane, a tornado, whatever, all of those metaphors really refer to difficulties, test trials that we can have in this life and no one escapes them. What is extremely important in facing the changes that come in life, the challenges, whatever word, I like to call them opportunities for, for God to do me good, would be your core beliefs. All of us have core beliefs. These are beliefs which we believe deep inside of us. Sometimes they may be a bit of a contradiction or dichotomy between what we say we believe and what we actually believe. What really makes the difference and what allows us to know what we truly believe is when it is tested, when it is tested in some kind of form. Core beliefs are very important because they make up who you are. They, they, they move you to responding to life in, in various ways. Now I want to tell you what my core beliefs are. Now some of you are going to say, oh, she said that so many times already. Yes, that is probably true, but I want to let you know that what I am saying, I want to place in the context of this book that has 671 pages, <laughs> and I spent a number of years in writing. It really represents a life work. That is the gospel truth. So what are my core beliefs? One is that um, before I was born, that God had written out my life plan. That, that does not refer at all to faith, but God had charted my course. And where do I get that idea on what is that core belief founded? It's founded on Psalm 139, 16, where it says that every day, your, every day before every, each of the days before you live them had been written out in your book of life. You may or may not believe that, but I believe it. So even now me here staring at you, would you believe it? That before we were born, that this day was written to. The second core belief that I have is that nothing touches us unless it, the child of God, except it first passes through the hand of God. And by the time it reaches you, it has been weighed and it has been measured. So whatever it is, as you depend on God, he is going to bring you through and you can glorify him. And the third core belief is that, and this is um, like what the, the tune that the code died on, is that all things do work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And, and that is in the context, again, of a life plan, Jeremiah 29, 11, that God says he has a good plan for us. I do not believe that God brings evil into the lives of his children. We have a way of categorizing things, don't we? I think... <clears throat> Something becomes evil when, as it were, our, our response to it may render it that way. I am not saying that there are some things which are not inherently evil in themselves, but even things which are sent. And it, it, even, look, take, take, for example, the life of Joseph. What the brothers intended for evil, it didn't work out because God had a plan and he has a strategic long-range plan. I was hoping to get to read you something in this note, but it means it. It gives me some fuel for the second note. My core beliefs are very much influenced by this book that you would have heard me speak about so much. God sent a man. In the next note, I want to do a part two to the idea of core beliefs, and I want to share something from this book. So I'm going to pause here now. I'm not going to go beyond five minutes. Thanks for listening and stay tuned with me as we continue our book talk. Bye.